among the forces that we have to learn how to model in physics is tension. Tension is a fairly simple force to model, and it makes a lot of conceptual sense. The reason for doing this is that we often encounter tension forces, and that tension forces are in interesting directions, which gives us a lot of practice of adding vectors. The force of tension shows up any time we have a cable, a thread, a chain, a rope, being one of the things applying a force to an object. The direction of the force of tension is always in the direction of the cable. So whatever direction the cable, thread, chain, rope, whatever, is attached to the object that it's applying a force to, the direction of that force is the direction of the cable where it attaches to the object. So let's look at this scenario. We have a hammock that's slung between trees that are 8 meters apart, and the bottom of the hammock hangs 1 meter below where the supports are attached. From that information, we can find the tension in the cable. Now, since we're not given the mass of the person or the weight of the person, we'll have to put this in terms of the weight of the person. What we're looking for is these forces marked F here in the diagram. We can do this by making a free body diagram. We assume that the person in the hammock is not accelerating. If he is, it won't be this situation for very long. So here's our situation. We have two forces of tension acting in the direction of the support ropes, and we have the force of weight acting down on the person. Since it's a statics problem, the forces all add to zero. Since they add to zero, we can line up all the vectors head to tail. That's how we add them together, and they should end up where we started. So here we show a force of weight down, and then two forces of tension, one that's slightly up and to the left, and one that's slightly up and to the right. We see that if the angle is shallow, the tension in a rope is significantly more than the weight of the person. Each cable has to support only half the weight of the person, but that's the vertical component of the tension. The horizontal component of the tension is much greater than the vertical component if the extent of the rope in the horizontal direction is greater than its extent in the vertical direction. An application of this effect can also be seen in the human body. One thing you may be warned against is reaching with a load while sitting. And I'll explain to you why this is a very bad thing for your spine. Basically, when you stand, your spine has a sort of S-curve to it. This is the major part of your spine from the cervical region down to the lumbar region. If you sit down, that removes quite a bit of the lumbar curvature. This curvature, it turns out, is very important for the attachment of muscles to the spine. So to explain what happens when you reach with a load, whether you're standing or sitting, the erector spinae muscles in the back keep it from moving forward. So here we're showing if you have a weight in your hand that will tend to pull down, that will tend to try to rotate your spine forward and make you fall on your nose. If you're standing, the angle that the muscle makes in supporting your spine is a much more horizontal angle than when you're sitting and the curvature of the spine is taken away. So let's look at these forces in more detail. First for the standing posture. So we'll look at the attachment region where the erector spinae muscle actually attaches to the lumbar vertebrae. We're going to make a free body diagram showing the forces on that vertebra where the muscle is attached. So we see basically a force forward from the arm that trying to rotate uh, in a clockwise direction, a normal force from the vertebra below it, and the tension in the muscle. So this is how we would draw the free body diagram to make that happen. The normal force upward, the force from the arm, and the tension that's holding it back. When you're sitting, the angle of that force of tension has to become a lot more vertical because a lot of that curvature has been taken out of the spine. Looking at that same region again, we now have a much more vertical tension force. To make this free body diagram, to make this free body diagram actually match, we need to have a component of tension in the horizontal direction that will cancel the component of the force from the arm that's pulling forward. When the angle is very steep, that's impossible to do. And so what you'll end up doing is pulling a muscle in your back.